Good afternoon, one and all. Today I am going to speak about uh, blue brain, which is nothing but a virtual brain, which will be made, which will be invented after 30 years. So the scientists are still working on it. So the things I am going to discuss about is the introduction about the blue brain. What is exactly the blue brain? What is virtual brain? Brain stimulation. Current research work that is going on. And advantages, disadvantages, requirements, and finally, finally the conclusion. So before I start, I want to ask you a question. The question is, as all of you are all engineers, and there are many other uh, uh, many uh, uh, scientists. So, do you think that they will be making this uh, blue brain after 30 years? No. They'll definitely make it. IBM is working on it and they gave the uh, uh, assurance that they are going to make this brain after 30 years and that is going to happen for sure. So first, as you all know, human brain the most valuable thing. The man is called intelligent because of his brain. If we use it properly, we are called humans. If we don't, if we don't use it properly, then other thing. So blue brain, the name of the world's first virtual brain. So this name, virtual brain, is given by IBM. This means that a machine that can function as a real brain is just a single, a small chip which will be installed in our brain. And this uh, small chip, it goes in the circulatory, uh, I mean all the parts of the uh, uh, brain, and then it generates information. So what exactly is blue brain? Is it really possible to create a human brain? Yes, the IBM is now developing a virtual brain which is called as blue brain. It would take exactly 30 years to make this brain and this thing will work if you only have a supercomputer. I will show you the picture in the next slide. So this is the thing. Um, it has a different system, rack, mid plane, note card and uh, computer card and that's a small chip which I told you. So that chip will be installed in our brain and it collects all the information and it even responds to that. So if you, uh, this is basically a machine that can function as a brain. It can take decision, it can think, it can respond just like as we as, as a normal brain. So why do we exactly need this virtual brain? As you all know, we are all stressed up in everyday life. We cannot uh, gather so much of information in our brain. So the scientists are working on this so that the information which is not important as much can be stored in computer and which can be looked in afterwards whenever you want. So to upload contents of the natural brain into it, to keep in intelligence, knowledge and skill of any person forever. So even after the person dies, what you can do is, uh, the memory power what he had, everything can be stored in this. To remember things without any effort. So this is the basic difference between natural brain and uh, simulated brain. As you all know, natural brain it works with uh, neurons, but this uh, virtual brain will be working with a silicon chip, uh, which is called as silicon chip, and interpretation. Uh, as you all know, we have different uh, functions that will be going on in our body, like first brain, and then goes to nerves and all. So by different states of set of neurons that are present in our brain. And interpretation by simulated brain is by a set of bits. Uh, is a mistake here. Uh, by a set of bits in the, uh, something missing. Next output uh, through the natural neurons. As you all know, the brain it works with uh, different nerves and all. The output considered to virtual brain is through a silicon chip, as I already told you. Processing through arithmetic and logical calculations. That is a uh, real brain. So, now coming to the simulated brain, through arithmetic and logical calculations, artificial intelligence, that is, they, they, they do different uh, coding and other things, so that uh, it can manipulate and it can make actual uh, calculations and then respond to it. Coming to memory, through permanent states of neurons, through secondary of neurons. Basically these are the uh, silicon uh, thin fibers which will be used here. Uh, 
uh, this is the thing nanobots, this is called as nanobot. So this thing is the main thing for the virtual brain. The uploading is possible by use of small robots known as nanobots. These robots are small enough to travel throughout a circulatory system. I told you the starting way. They can be traveling throughout a circulatory system and they can gather the information and they can respond to it. Traveling to the sp uh, spine and brain, they will be able to monitor the activity and structure of a central nervous system. Just like our brain, they are going to respond. They will be able to provide an interface with computer while we still reside in our biological form. <coughs> Next, nanobots could also carefully scan the structure of our brain, providing a complete readout of the connection. This information when entered into the computer could then continue to function as us. So when this, when the information that is gathered in the, when everything is put into the computer, it shows the structure, the functioning of the brain, how it works, and basically the, the scientists are even trying that, uh, like normal person, for how many years the brain is going to exist. I mean, it's going to live. Thus, the data stored in the entire brain will be uploaded into the computer. So the information which is collected, everything is going to be stored in the computer and which can be again uh, viewed by us. So examples, basically, basically old people, uh, when you see old people they forget uh, whatever they see just a few seconds back and they can't see the people. Right? So blue brain is very useful for them. A very good example of utilization of blue brain is the case of short term memory. This is the best thing I like because whatever we study, everything is going to, we are going to forget it, right? So maybe we can store in this. In some movies, we might have noticed that a person might be having short term memories. So in movies, what we have to see, uh, when the role is going on, they forget the few dialogues. So that's how they are going to put all the memory into this. Another situation is that when a person gets older, as I told you already, then he starts forgetting or taking a bit more time to recognize a person. Exactly, this is going to happen with old people. For the other reasons, we definitely need a blue brain. It's a simple chip that can be installed into the human brain for which the short-term memory and volatile memory at very old age can be avoided. I think after 30 years, this brain, uh, the scientists are even trying that uh, the people who are, who are born, or uh, well, like when they are born, they will be giving birth like, uh, they will be having all the defects and all that. So they are even trying to install this chip in a just born baby so that they can serve for a longer time. This is just, uh, this second one, uh, scientists think that the blue brain could also help in curing Parkinson's disease. Yes, this is the requirements that we should, that we need to have to install this uh, virtual brain. We need to have a supercomputer. <coughs> this is the computer, and that's, that's the main thing. <coughs> Memory with large storing capacity. It should have a very big uh, processor, a wide network, a program to convert the electric impulses from the brain, uh, brain to input signal, which is to be received by the computer. So exactly what uh, the chip is uh, gathering the information, everything will be stored into this. Very powerful nanobots to act as an interface between the uh, natural brain and the computer. So what exactly are you thinking that uh, in future course of time, this virtual brain is going to dominate us, is going to dominate the natural brain. So advantages, remembering things without any effort, Making decisions without the presence of person, exactly. Using intelligence of a person after the death. As I told you already, when the person dies, we can still store, we can still uh, review that uh, whatever the person was thinking, whatever he had studied, whatever he did, everything can be stored in this and we can once again go back through it. Understanding the activities of animals, understanding the activities of animals, and if this thing works in the humans, the next thing is. Uh, the scientists are going to try on the animals, they are going to try it on animals. Allowance of deaf to hear by direct nerve stimulation is also very helpful for deaf and dumb people. Next, disadvantages. We become dependent completely on the computer. 
Others use technical knowledge against us, like the virtual brain, which will be dominating us. Another fear is found with respect to human cloning. A very costly procedure for regaining the memory back. So this is, uh, it's going to cost something like more than like 5 crores or something. So the scientists are trying to get the price down so that many people will be using this. And finally the conclusion. We will be able to transfer ourselves into the computer at some point in future. So basically this virtual brain is going to dominate us. One day it's going to take the future. It will bring both benefits and harm to human society because after this thing uh, comes into the market, people start using this. They think that everything can be stored in this. That's how we remember everything. Very soon this technology will be highly accepted whole, uh, uh, over the world. Because as you see the present generation, many people are dependent on computer and technology. And after 30 years, definitely everyone will be depending on this. Any questions? No. That's it. Thank you.